Time now for the Marcus with Layton. And Layton, you say a new snapshot of the catfish industry is out. That's right, artists. The numbers were released on Tuesday the 20th this past week. And the aquaculture story continues to be fewer catfish but higher prices. Also ahead, the nation's cow herd continues to shrink in size as the price of soybeans may slip as harvest season rolls on. We begin with Tuesday's catfish processing report. Fish supplies continue to be way below 2010. The average pond bank price being paid to U.S. producers in August was $1.28 per pound. That is up another two cents per pound from July and an increase of 48 cents per pound compared to only one year ago. Farm sales totaled over 30 million pounds round weight down 22% from the same time in 2010. Processor sales were just over 14 million pounds, a drop of 30% from August 2010. In the beef sector, there are new projections that the nation's cow herd numbers may fall to historic lows. Drover's Cattle Network reports this week prices for cattle are expected to remain relatively high next year as USDA says beef production will decline by 4.5% in 2012. Now that's expected to drive retail prices higher. This forecast worries some analysts who think beef could be priced out of the marketplace in 2012. Well, of course, the liquidation of cattle in Texas due to the recent drought and ongoing drought is part of the reason for projections of a smaller U.S. herd. Analyst Walt Hackney says if and when Texas gets some decent rainfall, the market there for replacement cattle will take off and impact the market everywhere. Those individuals that are sitting and owning a replacement quality stock, bred heifers up to three or four year olds, they're going to be in a catbird seat in a hurry because the, cat, the Texas and the Oklahoma ranchers that have been forced because of this drought to liquidate 650,000 head of cows out of that herd down there, they're going to replace a large amount of those cattle. And the market is going to escalate to unbelievable figures, I'm sure. There's a lot of money in the hands of ranchers that were forced to liquidate because the market itself was very good at the time most of them were liquidating. They were selling pears, they were splitting the pears, and they were getting good prices for the calves and the cow. We pause for a moment now to look at this week's trivia quiz on Farm Week. It's about one segment of commercial horticulture, the pecan. How many pecans are used to make a pecan pie? Here are your possible answers, 55, 78, 90, or 115. You'll find out just a bit later in this week's program. The market segment continues now with a look at corn and soybeans. Extension Ag Economist John Michael Riley joined me on set Thursday morning. John Michael, let's begin looking back at that September 12th set of numbers, the crop report and supply demand numbers, uh, beginning with corn. What do we pick up there? A uh, national average yield of 148.1 bushels an acre, which is down from 153 in the August report, but it was mostly in line with uh, what we expected. Uh, look, we were looking for 148.8, it was a little bit below that. Uh, we've been thinking the corn crop has been under some pressure for most of the growing season. Uh, USDA kind of came through with that with this, with this 148 bushel per acre yield projection. Uh, acreage is pretty much unchanged. Production for corn uh, just under 12.5 billion bushels, about a 400, bu uh, 400 million bushels off of the August estimate. That was mostly offset when you look at the demand side of the equation. Uh, we lost about 400 bushels or 400 million bushels in, in corn demand, uh, 200 to the livestock sector, 100 to ethanol, and 100 to exports. So, not a whole lot of changes at the bottom line of the corn uh, balance sheet, but uh, definitely the, the yield is is looking like it 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 was uh, was under pressure, and USDA is, is showing that. Now, what about on the soybean side? What's the picture? Not a whole lot of uh, surprises there on the soybean side. We were looking for uh, a, just uh, just over 3 billion bushels of soybeans, and it, it actually came in just under 3.1 billion. Uh, in terms of overall production, uh, yield is projected at 41.8 bushels per acre, uh, which is uh, you know mostly in line with what, what the projections were. Not a whole lot of changes on the demand side for soybeans, so at the end of the day, uh, no big, real big surprises. All right, let's talk about uh, the markets, the prices as we move forward here. Now, uh, 
Corn prices again are, are, are very strong. What are we looking at here as we, we head into uh, late September, 1st of October? Well, we're, we've dropped below that $7 per bushel uh, number and we're currently sitting in the high sixes for, for the most part in terms of uh, this year's corn crop <clears throat> price. But uh, a lot of it, you know, we've, we've, we've saw it slip as a result of, uh, since the report came out, the report was mostly bullish for corn because it, the, the projection was lower uh, in terms of yield, but it's been facing some other challenges, primarily the, a stronger dollar over the past couple of weeks. Uh, oil has come down just a little bit. Both of those really play heavy into the corn price, and as a result, we have seen the, the corn price slip below that $7 mark. Soybeans. Uh, kind of following in the, in the footsteps of, of uh, corn, and it's, it's come down a little bit over, the, over that same time period as well. The market for forestry products in the Mid-South region suffered another blow this month. A classic mill town in southeast Arkansas, not far across the river from Greenville, Mississippi, is losing its mills. Georgia Pacific says its multiple plywood plants and a stud mill, all located in Crossett, Arkansas, will close November 7th. 700 workers will be unemployed. The decline in the housing industry is being blamed for the decision by GP. Checking the trivia answer for you before this week's new feature story on Farm Week, every pecan pie uses a half to three quarters of a pound of pecans, so there are said to be about 78 pecans used in the average pie. B is the right answer. 